flyweight prospect Jerome Rivera. What's going on, man? I'm glad to have you on the show. Exciting times for you. How you doing? I'm doing great, sir. Just finished up my last little bit of some hard sparring, last bit of hard training in before the fight. So feeling great, bro. Ready to roll. It's been a, a, a pretty unique year so far. Can you describe to me how the first half of 2020 has been for you? Oh, it's been a roller coaster for sure, as I'm sure it has for everybody. Just a lot of adjustments, a lot of uncertainty, and just rolling with the shots. I mean, here in uh, the United States, like a lot of our states here, all of the governments are all on different pages. And you go to one state and you got to wear face masks and quarantine for 14 days. And you go to another state and they don't give a shit about it. So it's like... I don't know. We've just been dealing with a lot of adversity, trying to stay really creative with my training because, you know, when we got these big fights lined up, like, this is my my lifestyle. Like, this is what I do for a living, you know. I got to keep getting my training in, so it's forced me to get really creative and stay hungry and stay grinding. Has it made you kind of adjust your mindset a little bit about thinking too far ahead? Because it seems like nowadays you can't think too far ahead. You got to think, like, what's right in front of you exactly yeah i was actually just talking to somebody about that earlier like you know you just kind of got to kind of be ready for whatever right now you know like who knows if the fight's even still going to happen on august 4th for all we know we can go back into a uh, really serious quarantine and fights might or i might end up getting sent to abu dhabi instead of las vegas or the dude i'm fighting he's coming from mexico so i mean who knows if he's even going to make it there august 4th so i'm just uh definitely ready for Luis Rodriguez but at the same time I'm ready for anything any crazy sort of curveball that gets thrown at me earlier this year in January you actually fought at LFA 80 got the finish how long after did you find out about the contender series mm, so I fought January 21st and probably about a month later I found out about the contender series so uh it was pretty nice because you know I, I took about a week or two off and then I had like a, had it to be a really big goal of mine to stay busy in the off season and get a lot of lifting in and stuff so I was already lifting and starting to train again we were calling to fight Brandon Royval the LFA champ that's who we asked for right away right after that fight and so I was staying ready just in case I got the title shot against him and then sure enough we had gotten offered the contender series fight against him so that was really great but like you said earlier you got to be ready for whatever because as of like May 23rd, I thought me and Brandon were going to have our rematch on June 23rd of the Contender Series, but then he got signed to the UFC. Contender Series got pushed back to August 4th. I mean, just got to be ready for anything that gets thrown at you right now. So basically, you've been training for the Contender Series since March, and it's got to been the it's got to have been the longest training camp of your career so far, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's been a long training camp, but. Also, it's just like forced me to be really professional and have everything down to a science because you can't have training camps this long if you're not taking care of your body the right way. So I have my recovery down to a T. I got my nutrition good. I got everything on point right now. So we've just really been like doing a lot of trial and error with the training camps. And we've had so many now where, you know, um, yeah, we've got it down pretty good. So you can't have these kind of training camps this long if you're not taking care of your body the right way. Before we get deeper into the, the training and, and, you know, the protocol that you've taken to prepare yourself, I wanted to go back to the two setbacks that you had. They were back to back. And, uh, you know, that's a rough time in anybody's career. What did you learn from that period of your career? One of the biggest things is just like you got to focus on what's right in front of you because, uh, when I went in there and I fought Roberto Sanchez for the inaugural flyweight belt for LFA, um, I had been hearing rumors since before that fight that I was going to get signed to the UFC if I won. And in my head, you know, I was going to run through Roberto because just on paper, I was like, you know, I can match this dude's grappling. I'm going to blow him away striking. And I guess you can kind of say I was like overlooking him in a sense just because I knew he was a tough challenge, but I was thinking about the fights after him. And then... Um, I lost to Roberto and dealing with that loss was like really hard for me because you know like I I wanted to have stay perfect and never lose you know hit one of these big huge streaks and like when I first hit that loss it was like the end of the world for me you know I was facing a lot of stuff um, earlier that year 
I had uh, I was a young dumb kid, you know. I had just turned 21 um, a little bit before that, and I'd gotten a DWI. And uh, so a week after that Roberto fight, um, I had got pulled over, and I had an interlock in my car, but I didn't have an interlock license. And so a week after that fight, I was sitting in a jail cell. So I mean, imagine going from being on top of the world, you think you're gonna get signed to the UFC and have this belt to a week later you're sitting inside of a jail cell like at the rock bottom of your life so i went from the highest high to the lowest low and then uh you know after that i was like i'm turning my life around you know I'm, i want to be a champion i want to stick through this this is what i do and got back to grinding you know i worked my ass off uh for the rest of that year and then we had gotten offered that brandon royval fight and I trained my ass off for that fight. I worked really hard. I had tunnel vision. You know, I was like, I'm going to run through this kid and I'm going to get signed to the UFC. This is my time. You know, I don't care who this kid is. I'm going to the UFC. And uh, went in there and mixed it up with Brandon. Got a little too emotional. Uh, me and him got in some exchanges, some pretty heated ones early on. And I made a mistake, threw a lazy leg kick, got that kick caught. And that was the end of my night there. And then it was just back to facing that adversity again. You know, I, uh, my fiance at the time was five months pregnant with my daughter. And then, like, I went from thinking I was going to be going on to these bigger fights in the UFC to all of a sudden I couldn't work for two months because I had a dislocated elbow and I had to get Tommy John surgery. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had a daughter on the way and I didn't really have any sort of career to fall back on. So it was a lot it was i had to really persevere through that because i was just thinking at the time like damn should i be doing this like is there a different career like do i gotta maybe go start going to school so i can take care of my family and provide and you know is this just like a silly dream that i'm hoping for and everybody i talked to is like you know are you done fighting are you done like that was a pretty gruesome injury and like everybody just expected me to quit and that just kind of lit up a new fire under me i was like you know i'm gonna persevere through this i'm gonna come back stronger and it's exactly what I've done you know I'm, I'm a new person I'm mentally just a stronger fighter stronger person like just those uh, losses made me who I am today yeah the support system is always going to be there but those people that doubt you I think that that's the biggest driver right to prove them mm -hmm. wrong in the in in those adverse times man yeah and I don't know like I'm sure this is how every fighter is but like I got that chip on my shoulder I feel like everybody's always been doubting me like you know and it's kind of maybe just how it feels like uh, just subconsciously that's how everybody feels and you're kind of shooting for a dream and you feel like other people may think it's silly. But yeah, so I've always kind of had that chip on my shoulder like nobody thinks I could do this or people think this is silly what I'm doing. But you know, this is the life that I live and there isn't anything else in the world I'd rather be doing. Yeah, going through all of that, I feel like when you do get to the bigger stage and you have to go through it again because it's going to happen again, man. It's fighting, yeah. you know, there's mm -hmm. ups and downs. It's going to mm -hmm. allow you to deal with it a lot better, right? It's going to be able yeah. to, like, mentally get through it faster. Yeah, well, like, and I tell people now, like, even leading up to this fight, I tell everybody, like, you know, win, lose, or draw, I'm not worried because I know I'm not going to quit. I'm just going to get better, and I know how good I am, and I know my worth. And, I mean, it's inevitable. People make mistakes. If I go in there and I fight the way I can and I don't make a mistake, I can beat some of the best guys in the world, if not the best guy in the world. But... It's a challenge to go out there and not make a mistake. It's very easy to go make a mistake. So we're all trying to go out there and put on a flawless performance every single night, and that's the challenge. And that's what I'm shooting for, August 4th. Definitely. Well, August 4th, you were supposed to be on there June 23rd, and, and the pandemic happened. You got a new opponent, too, Luis Rodriguez. Give me your thoughts on him and uh, his skill set. Uh, when I think of Luis Rodriguez, I think of a Muay Thai fighter. You know, he looks like that really traditional Muay Thai style, uh, really traditional Muay Thai stance, hands up nice and high, has some nice heavy leg kicks. I think he has a lot of heart. I think he looks really tough, but I think he's just a really young kid right now. And I think he has uh, a lot of maybe challenge. I don't know what he's been through in his life, but I just know uh, I feel like my experience and my professionalism is going to play a big role in this. Um, just the way I formulate my training camps, all the extra work that I put into this, I just feel like I might be a little bit ahead of him in the game right now. We mentioned earlier, or we talked about earlier, about a, a long training camp. Now the fight is getting closer and closer. What kind of adjustments have you made to, you know, put your body where it needs to be so you could peak perform at that on, on that day on August 4th? 
Uh, me and my team have just been doing such a good job, like these last couple of camps at communicating. Like I get my schedule and I write every single training that I'm doing for the week, for like the next month. And me and a couple of my training partners will all be on that same schedule and I'll give it to all four of my coaches. And we all just try and stay on the same page. And like, like I said, like I've been training now since March, so my body's already in good shape. So usually at this point when we're like two or three weeks out, we're still trying to do cardio to kind of be like all right let's get even sharper it's getting better but right now like I feel great so we're just trying to maintain and just cruise and just kind of you know sharpen up and get there to August 4th who who is the team who's that small core group that you have helping you out oh man it's so awesome I got such a great group of guys we got a uh, Chris Luttrell that's my MMA coach MMA slash wrestling uh we got Ray Yi uh he has a bunch of different types of striking Muay Thai uh, kickboxing, boxing, he does stick fighting, Jeet Kune Do, a bunch of different styles all meshed into one. I got my head guy. This guy oversees everything. He calls all the shots, makes all the decisions. His name is Joshua Montoya. Uh, he is a former fighter also. He's been my dude since day one. I met him when I was 16, and we've been grinding together for nine years now. And That's like my main little group right there. Then I got a couple other guys. Joaquin Zamora is my boxing coach. I uh, got my buddy Angelo Sanchez, teaches me some Muay Thai in Santa Fe. Got a jiu-jitsu coach, Ben Sandoval. So, I mean, just a, a lot of uh, good guys that genuinely care about me. And we all just grind and put in that work. And I feel with this little group I have of guys that genuinely care about me and we all care about each other, like this group, I'd, I'd put our group against anybody in the world, American Top Team, Factory X. Uh, I mean, last uh, LFA we went 5 and 0 on the night of uh, our team and i think we'd beat like three jackson's dudes or something like that so we're uh, you're going to be hearing about us sooner or later no doubt man um now where do you feel you will outshine rodriguez um executing my game plan you know i feel like i can really beat him in all areas but again it's just not making that mistake you know I got to go out there and strike long. This guy's 5'6", I'm 5'10", so long strikes are going to be the key to keeping this guy off of me, and when those takedowns come, I feel like I have a big advantage in the grappling department. And, uh, you know, I just want to just kind of make this guy uncomfortable everywhere we go. I think I got a better clinch game than his, and I'm just riding with a lot of confidence right now. I feel really good. You being 5'10 and fighting at flyweight, that's just going to stick out on the page, you know, when you yeah. when you look on paper, right? And, mm. and I feel like that is just a massive advantage for you, especially with uh, the ground game and, you know, f striking from distance, all of that. Mm. Uh, do you feel like that is going to be the X factor when you do go up to the, the, the top level and when you face off against the other flyweights, you know, the best flyweights in the world? Oh, yeah, I feel like I, I create a bad matchup for a lot of guys just because of my length. Like you said, like when it comes to the grappling department, length is something that's hard to deal with when it comes to striking. You know, if I'm constantly keeping people back, what's their game plan? I want to come inside. I want to get on the inside. But I got knees. I got elbows. I got a good clinch game. So, you know, I just take pride in trying to be well-rounded. I try and like I try and wrestle like a little guy. I try and uh ju do jujitsu like a long guy you know i try and get good at fighting on the inside so i think i can create a really bad matchup for a lot of dudes davison figueredo whoever it is i think i can if as, lo as long as i can go and execute a good game plan i'd fight anybody in the world what type of performance do you see yourself having you know to earn that ufc contract uh i I don't know, man. You know, there's going to be, I mean, if we get into that dog fight, I think people are going to see that grit. You know, I'm going to show the grittiness about me. I don't quit. I don't give up. Um, but I think also at the same time, like, I just think, like, I'm a really scrappy dude. And I just, whether we're striking or we're grappling, I always bring it. And I, I'm just going to have my foot on the gas pedal that full 15 minutes. And if I get the finish sooner, which I, I mean, I don't want to say I'm going to, I tend to get finishes. And you know, I have a feeling it's going to be an exciting one. One last thing before I let you go. There's many different types of competitors in this sport. Do you consider yourself a, a prize fighter or a martial artist at this point in your career? Mm, I would call myself a martial artist. Mm. Yeah, me and, me and my fiance were talking earlier. and I told her, you know, if I if we fought for 10 more years or 5 more years and got all these belts or if we just fight for one more year... Mm. 
who knows how my career is going to go or who knows how life is going to go. But I know that I'm always going to be a martial artist. And, you know, I want to use these skills that I've learned over these last nine years to inspire people around me. You know, I want to I want to be there for my family. I want to help give like younger kids confidence. Like, you know, I just want to use it to inspire people and help people. I'm not a doctor. So, you know, I can't go and help out in that sort of way. I'm not a school teacher or nothing like that. But what I have done is I've learned how to defend myself and I've adapted to this cool thing called martial arts and I just want to teach people in my community what martial arts is and I want to hold the flame for my state one day and just keep the keep martial arts alive where I'm from. All right. August fourth, Dana White's contender series. Jerome, thank you so much for the time man and uh thank you, sir. I'll be watching on Fight Pass or wherever they're gonna watch it. You better tune in. This is a, a scrappy, scrappy matchup right here. Thank you so much. Heck yeah, thank you, sir. Appreciate your time.